uh, going right back. It was like 92 degrees and then humid on top of that. I, I was sweating when I got out of the car. I was like, well, this is ridiculous. I'm not even going to, it's not even worth it. I believe it. I mean, every time it's hot and sticky, I say sticky, sticky goo and nobody gets it. You will. Sticky, sticky what? Sticky, sticky goo. Sticky, sticky goo? Yeah. Uh, okay, you don't get it. Jar Jar already stuff some shit. Oh, jeez. Well, you didn't do it in the accent. Oh, sticky, sticky goo. <laughs> Hello, and thank you very much for downloading this most recent episode of Movie Guys Podcast. You can download many more episodes at movieguyspodcast.podbean.com. You know what? We've reviewed all three now, right? This trilogy has been a long, has been around as long as we've been around. We're talking Deadpool and Wolverine. Finally, Eric, how the hell are you doing? Well, we're going to keep on talking about it because they're probably going to keep on making these. Oh. Wolverine is, or I'm sorry, Deadpool is arguably the highest grossing franchise of in the MCU right now, right? I mean, he didn't beat out Infinity War and Endgame, right? I mean, no. Independent franchise. Independent, in the I'm MCU? Sorry, I'm sorry, not independent, like made, but... Yeah, I don't know, yeah. But single person... Single hero that the franchise. I would consider you're right because Avengers is a group, it, and that's also a culmination of like what twenty something films that have come right. to these on its are on its own. These are standalones, right? Uh, these are standalones, and I'm going to tell you, I am so glad I went back to the movie theater. To watch it again, because if we would have reviewed this movie the first night I watched it, this probably would be a different review. Yeah. Um, I left, I'll just tell you, I left angry. I was complaining the whole way home that this is Halloween ends territory, songbird territory for me. This is... I was saying, this is a bag of kernels, and I'm going to piss off Eric, and I'm going to piss off a lot of people. I was that angry with the movie, but I went back. I went back. I was like, okay, all right. Let's see if my opinions change. But I I, I left the theater the first time angry. Well, I will say that this movie is a giant metaphor. From front to back, it is a giant metaphor metaphor. This is the first Deadpool movie in MCU. This first uh, Deadpool movie that is Marvel Disney distribu- distribution. The other two were 20th Century Fox. Right. And a lot of this movie is showing that. It is is a pretty much saying F you Fox and thank you Disney. We're going to keep on working until we're 90. Yeah. <laughs> um, Eric, I don't know. I, I, I don't. Okay, let's talk more about it. So I was, I was excited. I was excited for this movie. Uh, I never thought the movie was going to happen. Right? It's been how many years since Deadpool two? Has it been six? First one came. Uh, this, this first, first one, one was, was si- sixteen. 16. The second one was eighteen. So it's been nineteen, twenty, so one, two, three, three, four, five. Yeah, it's been six, six years. years. So I never thought it was going to happen. Yeah, I thought it was going to happen because of how much money it made, but at the same part, I did think it was going to happen because it's Fox. Sony and Fox, when the, with these properties, they suck with them. I think everyone knows that they suck with them, and I think they know that they suck with them, but they're going to hold on to them until they can get that money. And listen, Sony is doing their part where they have struck a deal. And this is behind the scenes, everyone, and you can look this up. But Sony has struck that deal with Marvel that says, hey, listen, we own Spider-Man and we will let you use Spider-Man for certain properties, but we get a cut and you have to pay us. There's there's obviously some sort of money contract that's that's there. Uh, Disney just straight up bought Fox, so they acquired that pretty easily. Right. And the whole X-Men franchise and everything that 20th Century Fox was was doing. But I think that's funny, and I was watching some YouTube videos about how in all of the Easter eggs, they did a lot of 
uh, Spider-Man stuff, but they never showed Tom Holland's face because that would be considered as an appearance in one of their slated uh, slots that they have. They don't want to burn it, obviously, on just a little quick cameo. They want to save Tom for the big stuff. Yeah, Spider-Man 4. Or the Avengers movies. Or Sony's Tobey Maguire Spider-Man 4, which I guess is greenlit. Oh boy, yeah, we're going to see uh, how this goes. They explain it a bit in this movie about how, uh, because this movie takes place in multiverse, was it 10.005? And 616, yeah. Well, it, it showed 616, but yeah. then it, uh, because that's that's the sacred timeline, which is considered Marvel's timeline. But in this movie, primarily is Deadpool going into... Um, 1005 or, or yeah, 1000, whatever, how you want to call it. 1005. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. I'm taking that as basically that is the the Fox multiverse. That is the X-Men universe. Right. Because there's a lot of X-Men references in the other, in the other two movies, right? So, um, well, there's Wolverine was, in there. There's a lot of X-Men in this. Right. I was I was I was a big Deadpool fan. That first movie, that was one of our earliest reviews, Eric, and I loved that movie a lot. I had that very famous story of I knew Deadpool from comics and Gina had no idea and I took her to the movie. Remember that story? Yeah, yes. And we went to the theater and she was she did, did, didn't want to go and we couldn't find a seat. She was just blown away that it was it was packed. Like couldn't believe it. And she ended up loving the movie. So when the sequel came out, she was dragging me to it. Let's go! Let's go! But then as soon as Vanessa gets killed in the beginning, she folds her arms and she's uninterested. What made the first Deadpool movie so good, my opinion, now years later, was that love story. That was the glue that held it together. Because Ryan Reynolds is crazy. Ryan Reynolds is me. The puns, the references, the pop culture stuff. I mean, that's the show. Yeah, I, I think it's just because it's a it's a parody of a superhero movie. It's you're coming to a part where Marvel superhero movies are getting to that point of fatigue, and this is able to break fourth wall. Listen, every hardcore geek was looking to be like, "Oh, there's going to be a Deadpool movie, and Ryan Reynolds himself is going to play it. Like this is going to be perfect casting." Right. And they drag all their girlfriends to it, just like you said with with Gina, and it turns out like this is in, in this movie especially uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. It, it steadily becomes less of a superhero movie and more of a comedy. Right, a hundred percent. Yeah, I, it definitely has lost its way. Um, I, I beg to, uh, I argue. I'd say because of Deadpool himself, that it's found its way. There's there's really only a few characters in the in the whole comic book realm that are able to break the fourth wall and ha- and be aware of who they are. Deadpool being one. And in there's plenty of parts in, in comics where he is self aware that he is a comic book character. In fact, I think there's one where he he's depressed and goes insane because of it because he knows that his uh, death and injuries are just there for entertainment. Um, I think She-Hulk is the other one, and um, oh, I'm trying to think of the other one, but I can't. But in the main that we know right now, She-Hulk and Deadpool are the ones that break the fourth wall. Okay, you know what? Since you're saying that, I can kind of see where this episode is going. But before I get into that, I was excited, Eric. Deadpool, Wolverine. I thought, correct me if I'm wrong, with pop culture that Hugh Jackman said that he was never playing Wolverine again. Something about skin cancer. Logan was it. He was done. And uh, we reviewed Logan, and I loved Logan. That movie was amazing. Everyone loved Logan. It was amazing. I'm not one to tear up in movie theaters, but there was a tear down my eye when the camera panned away with the X with the two sticks crossing on his grave, right? I was like, oh, that's the end of my childhood right there. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's the end of my early 2000s childhood. It's done, right? So he comes back. Uh, Brian Reynolds pulls up to every single person's house with a dump truck full of money and says, you're not going to say no. (laughs) <laughs> All of you are going to do this move. Uh, from what I understand, Ryan Reynolds pitched the idea 
to Marvel, to Kevin Feige. And he was already on, on board. And again, the big reason why I think this was able to work is because it's different distributors. It's no longer Fox. This is Marvel now. This is Marvel Disney. I, I think, I don't know if, if the paycheck was, was, I'm sure it was. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I think it was just a different home. And from what I understand, uh, 20th Century Fox, again, is just not really, uh, they they made it their own. They really steered away from a lot of the source materials, and they were just like, we're going to do our own thing. And um, the regiment that they had Hugh work on was ridiculous. So I know that Hugh hated having to constantly do that workout and dehydrate to show up that muscle and really be in peak performance. Whereas here, it's just like, no, throw on a suit. Yeah, throw on the classic, right? The trailers came out. You, me, probably you. I don't know. But every geek boy in the world was the blue and yellows. He's bringing it. And then the trailer shows you also puts on the mask too, right? That the classic Wolverine. Oh, dude, we're, I we're here. Out when I saw that yeah. mask, that was like, yes, we're here, right? This is something that we've been wanting for 24 years. Yeah, it's and I say that because the first X Men movie came out in 2000. But like, this is it, right? Like, this is what we wanted. Oh, absolutely. It, Deadpool wanted it too. So why do I hate this movie then? I I think it's because it's just more silly than than super maybe uh no. is it is it the multiverse thing multiverse is a big one it's not the main one i think what i liked about the first deadpool movie is that it, it seemed uh, more controlled uh it seemed more in its own realm and it was on a smaller scale and it was a simple story and sometimes that's better Right, it's better to not see the monster than to see the monster sometimes. Uh huh. And the second one, I'm not a fan of, and I don't think a lot of people were fans of it. It made box office, but it wasn't as good as the first one. Right, there's some good moments in the sequel. The it's sequel. cameos. Um, I liked Cable in it, but from what I understand, and they make fun of it in this movie that Josh Bro or yeah, Josh Brolin didn't test well as, as Cable, and so they didn't bring him back for this, but. This is the one where he he gets X Force together, right? And you get the cameo from Brad Pitt. Brad Pitt, we giggled about that one forever. We had a giggle with, uh, well, also, well, the guy I love, Peter Sugar Bear. Do you feel like this movie is more like a Wolverine movie, and Deadpool just kind of jumps in and interrupts it? I don't think this movie's any. I, I I'm going to tell you. Well, what's your again, deal then? Because I like this movie. I don't, so that's why I'm saying, like, I, I left the theater the first time mad. I went back and watched it again to see. I have a lot of complaints with this movie. Let's just start. Let's I don't want to go see it. if I see. Let's talk about it. So I really enjoyed his core crux of characters, right? So Deadpool had his people that he never killed, that he generally liked, that were always there. And they had more than just one line. We know about T.J. Miller. I ain't going to talk about that. But his blind roommate... She has a scene in this. Vanessa, which was the big deal in the first movie, and kind of the big deal in the second movie, they break up. And we don't know why or how. There's a line dropped that says that, oh, he's Deadpool, and, and I'm tired of his shtick. But that's crap compared to the, the last two movies that we've had. Uh, Sugar Bear is fun, but it's just fun because he calls him Sugar Bear, and he's Peter, Right. The taxi driver guy, he has a line. Like, why have these people in this movie if you're not going to do anything with them? Because, because the movie's called Deadpool and Wolverine. But those characters defined who he was. Those characters were a part of him. Yeah, in those, in those you know, movies and, and in a different universe. This is a different movie in a different universe. I understand what you mean. He's No, he's in his universe, right? Because no. so. I'll, I'll break it down. So movie starts, the bye 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 thing, but that we go back in time. But the movie so, is hold on. At the end of Deadpool two, right. he has Cable's uh, time traveling watch, mm -hmm. and he's able to go in different, in, jump in different times in different universes or whatever, and do the his old shtick. Kills Ryan Reynolds for doing Green, Green Lantern. Kills the old Deadpool in X Men Origins. It does all, is all funny kind of thing, and so at first 
And and by the way, this takes place before the end game, before Infinity War. This takes this place takes before the blip, right? Yeah, this takes place before the blip. This place, I think this takes place during Civil War. So when he goes to 616, he's trying to join the Avengers at, at, an, at an interesting time, but then he um, what makes him go to, I think he, just out of retiring, he goes to the other universe, right? Just to kind That's of... his universe. That's the way the movie tells me. Universe. Oh yeah, that's right, because he's Fox. That's right. Right. Universe 1005 is his universe. So this movie is he's in Universe 1005. He brings all of his friends that were going to die, brings them back Save Vanessa from dying, right? Right. Then he goes to 616, talks to Happy, Happy. and Happy's just like, yeah, bud, you're like you're like a B player. This ain't happening. That kind of shtick, right? You, you are not going to be an Avenger. You're not going to be in 616. He doesn't say these words, but paraphrasing. And then it just cuts to six years later, and now he's a used car salesman with Peter, and he's broken up with Vanessa, and his friends are all nothing but one-liners. He's not Deadpool anymore. Are you serious? For six years, there hasn't been another bad guy, another Francis, to for him to fight. Like, there's a six-year gap. Well, yeah, he's he, retired. He's just going. And keep in mind too, as we know from I know, I know, because there's all these shows that have happened as well too. So in this world, there are a bunch of other supers running around here that are under the radar. And we now have these different tiers. I think I've we've already described this before. You have like a street level hero. You have like a, a continental hero. You have a global hero. You have a universal space hero. And then you have like uh, supernatural heroes, cosmic heroes. It's all these different levels to base on your, on your power, right? So some of these people aren't even on the planet. They're off doing their own thing. And other people those- are, are doing... Are fleeing the, the caps on the run right now, right? But that's in six one six. That's not in his universe. And this one, there's mutants, right? So, so there's not even Avengers in this world. This is all mutants. Yeah, it's all mutants in this. And I, I just don't like what he's what they're doing with the characters. I'm I, I'm not saying that the taxi driver guy was. Oh my god, you give him a crap line. No, I'm not saying that. It's just he he was a character. You know what I mean? And they just kind of just push him to side, you know? Vanessa was the big crux of the last two movies, and they just push her to side. It's kind of like how people felt when they killed Hicks and Newt. You know what I mean? So it's is like, that really what you wanted? You wanted to see more like Colossus, more Negasonic Teenage Warhead, more Yukio? You wanted to see all all of them? You wanted a Deadpool 2 2? I wanted his universe, his people, his his villains. I wanted a, a self-contained story. I didn't like what they did with Deadpool 2. I liked the first one a lot. But that's why this is a metaphor. This whole movie is a metaphor that they're killing right. Fox and they're entering Marvel. Right. What I don't know if I enjoyed this. Meal. I, I'm picking at it right now. It doesn't look you that damn good right on the play. Yeah. I'm picking it. I don't like it. I especially don't like how we get the TVA in this. I hate, I hate the TVA. It needs to stop. Ryan Reynolds says Deadpool in this movie even said himself that the multiverse stuff is stupid. It gets a little crazy. Sure. It that, doesn't make sense. It makes perfect sense. You're you're gonna it sucks for you, man, because Yeah, it sucks so for you. Because we're I, gonna I get like more it. of it. That's this is how Doom is gonna take into place. And this is what Secret Wars is all about too. So yeah. Um that's I, I don't I, like I feel it. Feel bad bad for you here, man. So he gets captured by the TVA. And then what? He's supposed to go... He's been chosen. He's been chosen by Paradox, and that's when he goes to Logan Universe. Like Again, he goes back to his world to dig up Logan, thinking that Logan was going to be alive somehow? Like, I don't get that either, right? Like, he goes to dig up Logan, and it, 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 he says he's a skeleton. Well, not really, but you know what I mean. It's like, what would he expect him to not be? Well, I think he he was quick on that uh, jump, by the way, too, because Mr. Paradox didn't really finish what he was uh, tasking him to do. He just kind of went out to to go do it. And um, 
yeah, uh, to do something in the wider multiverse. Uh, but anyway, he says that Wade's timeline is vanishing. Kind of like, basically, by Fox, you know, just right. in that part. And, um, yeah, it, because of the death of the anchor being, which is Logan. The one that was holding Fox together, if you will. Yeah, he was their flagship. Right, of course. I'm ob- Obviously, this stuff is not clever. It's hitting me in the face. I mean, I'm I, yeah, following it. Yeah, I think, I think it's supposed to be very much yeah. so. And at the same part, he has, he's... he's um, gone rogue, Mr. Paradox has, and he has a device called the Time Ripper, an un- unsanctioned Time Ripper, by the way, and is uh, going to uh, kill or uh, prune this this branch here. Because why? Because he wants to be the, the TVA. So in the Loki series, um, in Loki season one, you had basically the old way of, of doing it, which was them pruning different timelines because there was the sacred timeline and right. the person controlling it all was Kang was the, he who remains. And he was making sure that his reigns supreme. And so they would prune other, all the ones and a uh, big story on that one. At the end of Loki season two, they defeat that. And Loki becomes the new timekeeper. He becomes the new guardian of the, of the time. And so instead of there being a sacred timeline that is kind of tried and true and have these all the different uh, separate, you know, uh, branches that come off with different variants, it's like a tree. It's like a tree of life. And, okay, I can see you shaking your head. and It's yeah. frustrating. Yeah, no, it's it's a lot to keep track of. and Not to offend you. In. I'm not trying to offend you. I, I it's, it's it's frustrating. That's all. No, I I I get it. I I'm not trying to defend it completely because I know that's a lot to keep up for. I just happen to be lucky enough or have the time to watch a lot of this. Fair enough. I just you know, but but for a person like me who really liked the first movie, going to this one, I'm just like, okay, the characters that I loved, his little side characters around the movie, and now he's digging up a dead Logan. And he's trying to find a replacement Logan so his universe can have an anchor beam. But then Mr. Paradox was like, you cannot fix an anchor beam. Well, his thing was, uh, Mr. Paradox was to take Wade, to take Deadpool out of his timeline, which is Earth uh, 10005, by the way, 10,005. Right. And, and put him in six months. And they put him in the sacred timeline because he's supposed to be destined for future events. Why can't he just take his friends with him? R- right. That's why that's that's kind of what Deadpool's asking. And right. Mr. Paradox says, because y- you were the one that was chosen. Deadpool doesn't like that, breaks his nose, steals his his, his temp pad, and then goes you, multiverse hopping. Right, where we get all the crazy Logans from all different comics, right? So there's some that I know, some that I don't, but a lot of these are covers, right? Where the Hulk is in Wolverine's Claws, like that's a big comic cover. Uh, Wolverine Crucified, I guess, is a big cover that I don't know about. I don't get the little... The, the dwarf uh, <laughs> Wolverine. Is, is that supposed to be something? I'm assuming it is. It's comic accurate because uh, Logan is not uh, t- not as tall as Hugh Jackman. He's, he's a short guy. Wait, 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 wait. I didn't know this. Are you telling me that, that, that little Logan in this movie is what the, throughout the comics that he's supposed to be that size? Uh, but in the original, not, not in the later <laughs> comics or in the silver or the golden years. But, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure. I could, I'll Google check this. I, I'm quite sure that he was supposed to be a, a shorter guy. And I didn't know that uh, that Henry Cavill was the bike Logan. It, it didn't even look like him. Oh, yeah, the <laughs> the Cavalrine. Yeah, the Cavill, which I, get, I read on Reddit that I guess fans wanted, if they were going to recast Wolverine, they wanted him. So a lot of this movie was also bringing up ideas that never happened or miscasts or uh, basically axed projects. And one of them was Henry Cavill as Wolverine. The other one was uh, Channing Tatum as Gambit, which I thought was fantastic. 
Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a few others in there as, as well too. Um, but I, I'm, I'm happy we got to see a lot of these cameos. Yeah. I, we I go thought there Wesley and Snipes and Ryan Reynolds hated each other. They do. Well, no, they don't anymore, but they did. They, they were on stage at the premiere and they hugged each other. So they're okay. Now, publicly. I yeah, mean, well, this, I thought it was more was, that uh, that what uh, Wesley Snipes was um, in his method actor. He was in Blade character, while Ryan Reynolds was just playing in, in Ryan Reynolds. And yes, uh, Wolverine's uh, comic book height is five foot three inches. Interesting. Uh, no, I I didn't think we we're going to talk about those big spoilers so quick. But yeah, since we're bringing it up, uh, I think Wesley Snipes, honestly, not to sound like a jerk. Wesley Snipes said yes, no matter what, because he wanted a paycheck. He has to pay the IRS quite a bit of money. <laughs> so he, he, he pushed his personal feelings aside. Uh, but then, you know, we get Ryan Reynolds getting the quote unquote worst Wolverine. And we find out in the middle of the movie that him being the worst Wolverine is he was drunk at a bar when all the X-Men got killed by good and bad humans. So then he goes on a killing rampage. That's what makes him bad. I don't know. That sounds like something that anybody would kind of do in this situation. But maybe maybe the crucified Logan with the Valley of Skulls maybe is the worst Wolverine. I don't know. Yeah, you, you, you never know. But You never know. Yeah, well, again, there's different Wolverines everywhere. I know that that Wolverine does have like a berserker mode. And... Uh, the, the animal part takes over sometimes and he goes when he goes on rampages and I think he likes that so that maybe would happen after this but I'm I also thought he couldn't get drunk because of his healing could be but I enjoyed it right because when they because when, when, when they both get pruned and they go to the void we see Wolverine do something that we've never seen he's crawling on all fours like an animal going to attack Deadpool that was cool. like I thought that was very cool uh the fight was fun, but then later, as the fight continues, I'm just like, well, they both know that they're not going to literally kill each other, so what's the point? Just so one person says, I quit, time out. Let it off steam, but, I guess. I, I guess. I mean, aren't they one of this? They're not, though, right? Because Wolverine can constantly reheal, but Deadpool has cancerous cells that are always killing him. So I guess yeah. it's different. Yeah, no, that's uh, their regeneration is a bit different. You're right. Yeah, uh, Wolverine's um, mutant power is that his dead cells are replaced with new cells, and he can regenerate. Whereas Deadpool, um, his dead cells just constantly keep on going with more and more dead cells. So he's like constant. He's in a forever state of of dying. Right. <laughs> Hence the name Deadpool. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's kind of an odd thing, but uh, which is why uh, we got to see Skullpool uh, later on in this, where it's just a floating head. Right. There's a lot of. Yeah. Then we get something that I was shocked. So my wife's in the theater with me, and uh, Chris Evans shows up, and she's like, "Oh, Captain America's in this," and I and I and I did spoil myself on this part because I knew he wasn't. And I was like, "No, he ain't Captain America." And my wife's like. You know, she's in the theater. So she's like, well, you know, who is she talking under her breath? You know, and I was like, you know who he is. And she was, who is he? <laughs> and then once Ryan Reynolds says, he's going to say, and he's going to say, and he goes, play him on. I was like, that's pretty funny. It's pretty funny. This chunk is pretty funny. Uh, the fight, them paying reference to Mad Max, because they're competing with Mad Max in the box office at this point. Right. Yeah. Kind of. And then also Chris Evans. Well, I don't think Mad Max kind of bombed, so. Nobody thought that, though. The last movie was so successful. Um, but I can tell you where I turn on the movie. So I don't like the movie right off the bat at the beginning. I like this little chunk here. But then when I turn is when we meet the twin of Professor Xavier, Nova, whatever her name is. Cassandra. Cassandra. Nova. Yeah, Cassandra Nova. <sighs> And she somehow is the ruler of the void. But I thought the whole point of the void from we got from the Loki series is that nobody survives the void. Galactus or whatever eats everybody. That's Eliath. the whole point. Goliath eats everybody. Uh, Eliath. 
game night, date night. Uh, sure. <laughs> uh, you know, I just, it, it's just yeah. like, why, what, what's going on? Well, she's trying to deal with, with the TVA. And listen, there's a lot of things to unpack here. One thing, and I'm fast forwarding, is that she has that, that Doctor Strange ring that can make a portal outside the void. It's like, well, wait a minute. I didn't know that those things were able to, to jump multiverses here. That's that's a pretty right. big that's, that's a pretty a big, big deal. thing. Yeah. So, or maybe if it's uh, um, not to jump multiverse, maybe it's just it's dimensions because it can go into different dimensions. So maybe uh, the void is something where it can go. Uh, people can go inside the void. Who who knows? It's there's a lot of unanswered questions. Hopefully that we'll get to that because I thought we've only seen the way to multiverse jump is through oh what's that one uh, America uh, the, the, in the Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness where they did uh, Scarlet Witch doing the dream weaving or whatever that was and then the one mutant that's able to punch through the multiverse right 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 so I thought that was the only way that we could we could do it but if they're going to introduce new ways to, to do it then we'll see how it goes but then you have the the whole incursion thing that they talked about um, and how that's going to work. And is the TVA involved there? So, yeah, it does get confusing, and there's a lot of plot holes that seem to be opening up more and more. But at the same part, we're just going to accept, right, that uh, one universe is going to get pruned and we're all just going to go into the sacred timeline. Who knows? Why do you like it at this point? Before we get into the cameos, why why are you liking it? And my arms are folded. Is it because you care about the Fox universe more than me? Is it because this is a better movie than what I think it I is? Have removed story from this movie a long time ago. My expectations for the story uh, for Deadpool, I I really put them to like second or third priority. When I see a Deadpool movie now, I'm in it for the jokes. I'm in it for the okay. Easter eggs. That's I, I don't care about anything else just because this is, and again, this is the first Marvel Deadpool. So there's going to be a lot of it, and there was a lot of it. And I, I think it's it's great the way that Deadpool uh, first calls Wolverine Hugh. I think it's great that he made many, many references to Blake Lively. I think it's great that he's, uh, talked to the camera a few times and referenced his own movies, <laughs> even with the 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 other the the the, the mob of Deadpool's and that one nice <laughs> Deadpool that couldn't regenerate. Says, yeah, I, I can break fourth wall too. And he turns to the camera and says, "The proposal." Yeah, I it's I I en enjoyed that, but the story to me because of how deep they are into this whole multiverse TVA thing, I'll Google that later. I, I I feel like that wasn't um like I've just totally bought into to how that works now and just figure okay well that's just a write off multiverse this what what multiverse are we in got it okay that's all the thing that I care about I'll ask questions later I guess for me overall when I'm at to this point in the movie and I feel like I'm repeating, but I, I really did enjoy that first Deadpool movie and what they introduced. And to where he is now, to be a joke upon a joke of himself and having all these different references, he, he's, he's no longer Simpsons. He's now Family Guy. Sure. You know what I mean? Sure. And it's just, and I'm not a Family Guy fan. So that's where I guess I'm kind of just getting really? my arms crossed. Not yeah, even, I mean, Not like, even early Family Guy? So I like some of the classic episodes. I like, you know, you know, like... The big stuff, if you will, right? Like Wish Upon a Weinstein. And, uh, okay, that's a good one. The band know, episode, you know, yeah. I like, uh, uh, you know, when Brian and Stewie are locked in a bank vault, you know, all some that of the stuff. Newer like ones, yeah. Yeah, you know. But I just, if I had to choose between Simpsons or Family Guy, who's going to die? I mean, Family Guy's going to die. Sure, yeah. And the reason I bring up the references is because Simpsons does references, so I, I put Deadpool in that category. But now it's such a slapstick of what it was that I'm just not I'm, I'm just not enjoying it. You know, I'm, I'm I'm not having fun. They pretty much do cutaways of of nonsense at this point. Do you think these jokes are funny? Like, are you laughing at this movie? 
There are jokes that I'm like, I mean, I definitely after the proposal one. Uh, didn't he call Van Wyber on Pan Wild or what, whatever, something like that? It was hilarious. Yeah. Um, uh, pop culture reference. I know that dog, Dogpool, is Britain's like ugliest dog, and he, I, I knew that from pop culture, so that was fun to see him in it. Um, I do like where we get uh, the the uh, cameos because I get it right. Uh, this movie is all about uh, Land of Misfit Toys. Okay. I just didn't want to see Deadpool go to this story. You know what I mean? I, I, I just wasn't, I just... Well, what, what would you want then? Because... I don't know. I, I'm probably back to the basics. How about this? Like, I for, for some reason, I thought of Michael Keaton's Batman when I was watching the movie, right? Okay. Because you and I were younger when those movies came out, right? But if you go and you watch, like I, I, I kind of put myself back to that time frame. If I watched the original Batman from '89 and Batman Returns, and all of a sudden I turn around and I get Batman Forever, I'd be like, "This is a total different kind of world. This is a weird vibe." You know yeah. what I mean? Like, that's what Deadpool three is for me. It's Batman Forever. It's Oh, this is kind of the same thing, but there's a lot of neon in stuff. Okay. Like, it's weird. It's not what I, I thought the third movie would be. Okay, okay. Well, let, let me try to help you out here then. So instead of, of this this giant F you to Fox and this giant welcome to MCU, this is what we're going to do now, and in a lot of their... Um, kind of story about that which seems to be your issue that the main story is them leaving fox to go to mcu would you rather that deadpool just teamed up with wolverine and they're doing the good old-fashioned beat him up kick some butt and then go defeat the big bad into a grand third act uh bloody battle no i think i would have rather have deadpool and wolverine think that each other is the big bad and they're just fighting each other throughout the whole movie until the end, you know. Uh, I don't know what kind of movie I wanted. I guess that's the simplistic way we get it. But the cameos are nice, right? Because they because they fight in the car, the Honda Odyssey. That was funny. Uh, to where out of nowhere, I don't know if she was in this, but Jennifer Gardner's reprising Electra. That was funny. That was great. That was amazing. And then Wesley Snipes coming out in Blade was funny. And we, I don't know, I enjoy it. I don't know if you do, but Channing Tatum is Gambit. I know the whole backstory behind that. So it's like, that's kind of fun that he's in this. Oh, I just love the, the jokes. Yeah, first off, I thought it was great. I, I'd like to see him in action. I thought that was fantastic. Big cheer for me. I also enjoyed the jokes where he's just like, I don't understand a word you're saying. Who's your dialect coach? What? Yeah, no, because he's had the New Orleans got an axe out of him, you know. And he's got, he's, he's yeah, Cajun, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah just off a jumbo shrimp. Was it? that your was that your Cajun? Is that... I don't know. That was kind of like Boomhauer in a way. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know, man. I don't know, I don't know. I'm like, I am wearing a Hawaiian shirt. Um, but the one that pisses me off that should not be in this movie, that, that made me really fold my arms, was, uh, was X-23. She should not have been in this movie at all. I really hated that she was in this movie. Yeah, I don't understand why she was in this movie either. Um, uh, like from her timeline, I don't know. Like because to be in the void, you have to you're getting pruned. So I'm assuming that the TVA had pruned her, knowing that she would be a threat to fight back of them pruning her timeline. But I'm assuming. So again, why any of these these characters are. In well, besides Gambit, Gambit, which is funny, which is a funny joke. Gambit's like, I think I have a bomber in here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which is a good joke, but X-23, I hold a special place in my heart for because she made, I mean, dude, man, that Logan movie was so lit, man. Like, that Logan movie was awesome. Like, there couldn't have been a perfect Wolverine movie. Oh sure, you know? and I think that's probably why they brought her in was to be the the heart piece for Logan. 
Right, but then, like, when she sits there and he tells his story by the fire, I'm just like, no, you don't earn that. You know, this this is not the same Wolverine. That wasn't even Wolverine. That was Logan in that movie. You know what I mean? So it's like, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it's a different thing altogether. But I think that's what the idea was, right? Because she had said that you're always, you always weren't the, the first choice. You were always, yeah. So I'm like, but I don't know. To like, say to to say that basically, no matter which Logan you think you are, I know that that you're the same Logan. I guess I, I just wish she wasn't in the movie. I, I just really not because of her acting, not because of any of that. I just think that her story and her character is top tier, and this movie's junk food. You know, like so. I just wish she wasn't in it. We did talk about this and just remembered it. That Chris Evans gets skinned. That was fun in the middle of the movie, right? Where where Cassandra Nova's like just does like like thing with her hand real quick. And his skin and his eyes yeah. look a little bit. It falls. Love that. I love that he killed Chris Evans. That was the, a good... The end credits scene, too. Um, I did not see the end credits. Oh, I won't spoil that for you, then. I just... I, I don't know. So then we come back, and then we get... Uh, again, not to sound like I'm fighting with you, but more nonsense, right? We get, okay, the team's getting back together, and we're going to destroy her and Ant-Man, which we didn't talk about this either. What's with... Paul Rudd's giant Ant Man thing as their base. Like, how is okay? You don't know. Okay. I I don't know a variant that uh, was in there. He's he's not Ant Man. He's Giant Man. So okay, who, who you, you don't know? No, uh, yeah, I yeah, I don't know why he's he's there housing a bunch of mutants. Um, maybe it's again it's a giant metaphor for something. What's the metaphor? He's always been MCU. He's never been Fox. Yeah, that maybe the, the, the smallest MCU character is still bigger than all the Fox characters. <laughs> Good. All right. I, 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 just, I just pulled that one out of my butt. But at the same part, like, I, yeah, who 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 knows why uh, Ant-Man or Giant-Man is, is, is there housing everybody? It's news to me. It's stupid. It, it really is stupid. They could have just had a regular base, but they chose that. And then we get the big fight, right? Did, did you want more mutants here? Did you want a Patrick Stewart in here? He was already. In- I didn't want this story, man. You want James like, McAvoy? Maybe some Fassbender? No, I just didn't want this story. I mean, like, I understand what they're doing. I just don't like it. Okay. Yeah, you know, I, I just, I just wish they told a different story. What that if, story is, I don't know. But if that's the case, if if you are already dismissing the story, then at what part can't you just? Just buckle up and go along with the jokes. Is it does it really bother you that bad to where you can't enjoy Ryan Reynolds as as Deadpool? I enjoyed the jokes. I was laughing. I was definitely laughing. Right when uh, they were fighting the Honda Odyssey and Wolverine insulted Deadpool, which you've never seen him that insulted before, and they were just beating each other up in the in the Honda Odyssey. But the joke was nothing destroys the Odyssey; it's economy. It's fun. It, I mean, I did laugh. I did enjoy it. Did when you it like com- Deadpool getting suited up when he first joined the TVH? Did you like that little montage there with his crotch and butt. I mean, sh- I mean, remind me of Batman Forever, right? That's my reference. <laughs> It was over and over and over. Right. No, it, it's just, Eric, I, I really can't form into words why, because I've been fighting with this. Because I've seen this a few days ago, and I keep on going back, like, what is it? It's really, really cool that we have Wolverine in this. And it's really cool that we got the blue and yellows. And it's really great to see Hugh Jackman, who said he was never going to do it again. And some of the jokes are fun. I just don't like the story. And... Cassandra Nova saying, hey, guys, since you... By the way, that's awesome. By the way, I will give the movie credit, right, where Cassandra Nova, like, puts her fingers through your whole head. That yeah. looks like that hurts. Yeah. <laughs> I, that, that does not look like that's fun. No, no, that's uh, a unique ability there. That's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, she's like, hey, guys, since you saved my life, I'm going to put you back, you know, and they go back to, I'm assuming Deadpool's... Uh, 1005 universe and this is where we get 10,005 and this is where we get 
the endless Deadpools. Yeah. Right. We we get we get Lady Pool and Kid Pool, which are all played by his family. Yeah. A lot of cool stuff and, there. And we were watching. My wife and I enjoyed the fights. Right. Just the gory, bloody, like watching all these Deadpools getting destroyed. And then my wife gets smart and she looks at me and goes. Doesn't Deadpool regenerate? So this is all for nothing, right? And then sure enough, they, they all regenerate again. And then we get the gratuitous, like, hey, we need to stop this. So Logan's shirt's going to rip off, which I guess was all Hugh Jackman. That was all Hugh Jackman? I would have assumed that was a body double. That was Hugh Jackman. Oh, all right, then. We'll go, go Hugh. Right. How do they survive? Because Paradox said that they wouldn't survive, but they did. Yeah, because. I would just assume that because uh, matter and antimatter, they don't mesh well, right? Well, we had talked earlier about how their regenerative powers are different, and I'm assuming that maybe they had something to do with it, and then it, it killed Nova. Didn't they say that it would it would kill someone or one person? So um, Maybe the you, kill Nova. Yeah, exactly. Maybe the answer is in the, the the carefully written dialogue there, but whatever. It's a Deadpool movie, a Deadpool Wolverine movie. They they live for whatever reason, right? So I do want to go into a popcorn. So I, I, this may be a longer one. Um, so please go first. Go first. What is your popcorn rating for Deadpool and Wolverine? Uh, I like this movie a lot. I, I I really did, but I might need to watch it again before I, I give it a large. On the first watch, I, I give it a medium. Listen, I, I enjoyed it very much. I think this story was uh, simple, and it didn't need to be. I think this was more of an introduction uh, than a movie. I think there was a lot of cameos that I really enjoyed, and it may have taken away from any main story that there would have been. But at the same part, I, I'm all for it. We're at a point right now where it's it's expected almost. And I like that they are bringing back old characters and making fun of them for it. it it's great to have Elektra there. It's great to have Johnny Storm there. I thought that was fantastic. I, I really, I really that was did. Good. That was uh, good. Yeah. And I, I, I really did enjoy it. But... Um, at the same part, I I guess I can agree with you that I don't think this movie is going to uh, maybe have the same effect as it will in five years. I think the 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 bads in this movie were kind of dumb. I think uh, time wise, it it's hard to keep track of not just the TVA. I can I can get on board with that, but to say. Like, all right, remember, this is this universe, and this is at this time, and it's these people who are affected. It's like, but you've already explained rules before about universe jumping. You've already explained rules before about what happens with other universes and pruning. And it's so is like Loki watching all of this happen then? I, I'm confused about all that. And then they're having to retcon a lot of this, the Kang stuff as well, too. It, it does get a little confusing in that part. And then there's the plot holes uh, where I feel like I'm, I'm left kind of wondering a lot about that. Again, that sling ring uh, where she's able to, uh, Cassandra Nova is able to, to go from the void into the real world uh, or that universe is, is uh, whatever. I would have liked to see more mutants. I think that would have been uh, fun. But we got to see a lot of the old ones too. We got like Pyro and Toad, Juggernaut. Yeah, I was fun to see Toad. Yeah, so those were uh, a lot of fun to to see um, all that. We got to see uh, Sabretooth. Who was played by the original guy who played Sabretooth in the first X-Men movie. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Blob was in there too, yeah. So, and I, I who, think... Blob was in this? Yeah, he was in the, the, the background there. I didn't even notice. But, uh, yeah, listen, a lot of, a lot of cool ones. I, I think that was... That's great. Uh, I'm all for it, but um, it's you're right. It is tough to make a movie like this with a meaningful story, and um, I don't know what else I would have wanted. But it it did feel to me like this was 
more of a comedy movie than it was a superhero movie. And I was just explaining to Sarah the other day that superhero movies are now becoming, if not already, their own genre, their own akin to action, horror, romance. It's it's not a subcategory anymore. I feel like it's dominant enough to say, no, this is its own thing. It's it, there are so many movies, there are so many TV shows now, uh, specials that are all for it. Everyone's doing it. Every streaming platform has their own, whether it be The Boys or whether it be uh, that's which Amazon, right? Or yeah. um, Hulu doing their own with uh, well, we everyone has their own. So it, it's gets a little lost in the sauce, but listen, I did enjoy this movie. I probably will watch it again. When it gets uh, released onto a streaming platform, um, I would have liked to have seen a bit more. What I'm missing, I think that I would like to have seen, is uh, instead of this being a TVA kind of retrieval thing, for maybe there to be another bad that Deadpool has to, um, a TVA bad, maybe like Mr. Paradox, he's trying to do something else, and then have Deadpool try to assemble uh, the X Force again. So you oh. get so you get the people who are remaining over from uh, Deadpool two, uh, like Domino or whatever her name was, and uh, maybe that kid too, and uh, try to do X Force because Wolverine was a part of X Force. Um, so get him in there, and maybe it's a threat to you know say like, oh well you, we need to join you because uh, it's a threat to your world and they're trying to kill your universe or whatever, and so they do an X Force uh, thing. That would be pretty cool. Um, I, I think maybe that route would have been a, a bit easier to swallow than just this ragtag comedy, throw them all together, and let's have a laugh kind of a thing. Um, I might be asking a little bit too much there. But, Could be. Yeah. Uh, again, I feel like they spent a lot of money trying to, to get the people who were. And... That's just what it is. What was the hold on? Let's see what the budget for this movie was. I'm sure it was uh, more money I'm ever gonna see. Two hundred uh, million. That's ridiculous. It's a lot of money. That's half of Robert Downey Jr.'s paycheck. That is half. Yeah. So uh, yeah, and it's already made its money back on opening weekend. Right. I mean, like, there's there's there gonna be more Deadpool. My if. If if we would have reviewed this the day after I saw this, it, it was going to be a bag of kernels. I was that angry. I was really Jeez. angry. Okay. Because I just didn't like what they did with the character of Deadpool. I didn't like what they did with the story of overall Deadpool. Um, I feel like they went in the completely wrong direction. So then I went back again and I watched the movie again. And I'm like, okay, clearly my attitude was a little extreme. I can understand that they are putting the middle finger to Fox. It's Half of it's buried in the sand, literally, in the movie. <laughs> um, and they're bringing back the Land of Misfit Toys characters that people kind of loved or also characters that people wish that they had that they never got. So this was Ryan Reynolds pulling clout to get what he wanted. Um, but then I don't think the movie had a very good story. And when a movie is like this, where I'm not expecting great dramatic acting roles, like I'm not going to this expecting to get a Logan, you know, but I, I just didn't feel anything for anybody. Like I, I didn't care because it didn't have that Vanessa struggle to make me want Deadpool to succeed. Does you know it help or hurt that this is the first movie that's, really doing damage control um it probably probably that probably probably the latter right like it's just doing damage control to fix everything i just don't like the tva i, I mean I, I don't know how to explain it i don't like the multiverses i don't like the dimensions i don't like the timeline thing because then all bets are off and you could literally don't have to die I mean, I'm sure you're telling me that, you know, because the TVA exists, Robert Downey Jr. didn't snap his fingers on one multiverse. Okay. But you know what I mean? Like, 
Well, I just don't like universe that. of that had you in it. Like that, Jordan five hundred is dead, but Jordan six hundred is still alive. Right. I just don't like it. That's all. I, I just don't like it. You know, I, I it's I, I I feel like it's an easy cop out when they come to writing. Well, Robert Downey, Robert Downey Jr. is not dead as Iron Man. He's dead in this universe. But he's not dead in this universe. We can bring him back and put him in this universe. It's just, it's it's just such an easy cop out to me. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, it's great that Robert Downey, that Robert Downey Jr. is coming back as Mister Doom. I don't know how they're going to do it. I think it's a very interesting casting choice. Obviously, he's a variant. Uh, that's my opinion. But this allows them to also recast any roles and to say it's a variant. So just like we saw with Henry Cavill doing it right now, it's like, well, we will recast Wolverine um, as, as somebody else and just say, oh, they're from a different universe. It's just the movies are now becoming the comics. And sometimes comics go a little too far. For me, since we're not reviewing this and I had a couple of days of digesting and talking with you, I'm going to give it a small for now. I feel like this could be a second watch movie, maybe for a movie guys awards. Maybe I go back and watch it six months from now and see if my opinion changes. Uh, it's, it's going up though. Right. It went from a bag of kernels to a small. <laughs> so I, I did enjoy the jokes. I did enjoy what they were doing. I just didn't like the overall taste. So for me, it's a small. Okay. Do you, do you like Ryan Reynolds Deadpool? Yes, of course. Nobody else plays that character better than him, just like Hugh Jackman or Wolverine, right? Like, okay. Do you like the yeah. the? And you said you liked the Deadpool style uh, jokes at a break fourth wall and everything. Or it's completely fine. I think they went a little too Family Guy ish with this, which I find Family Guy to be annoying. So I just wish they would have do like cutaways. Like no, but they're but they're there. Deadpool four, they'll have cutaways. You know well, what I, mean? I, don't like, go, I don't think they'll go that far. I, they went really far in this one to where Channing Tatum was Gambit with a New Orleans accent. They brought back Jennifer. He was, gonna be, he was originally trying to be Gambit. They, they axed that project. They, were tr- they brought back Jennifer Gardner, Eric. Oh, they yeah. They can do, any, they can do poor, anything. Poor dare, Daredevil. Just saying, they can do anything. Uh, yeah. Yeah, now that Disney is bought up Fox, they can do whatever they want. I don't think Disney can buy anything else. I think they're done. There'll, there'll be a monopoly at this point if they buy anything else. We'll see. Their stock is going down. We'll see. Everybody, thank you so much for listening to this recent episode of Movie Guys Podcast. I know you don't go to the website. You know you don't go to the website. You just listen to us on your phone or your tablet, right? So keep on checking us out. Movie Guys Podcast. And next year is going to be a special loop because we'll be celebrating something special. So check out for next year. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but we'll what I'm trying to say is next year is going to be fun. So I'm excited for next year. Uh, we're going nice to try, celebrate. Guy. Yeah, there we go. But Eric, thank you much for joining me. And we'll be back next Thursday, like always, for another awesome episode. Have a good night. Like we should see more Gungans in the Star Wars universe. I mean, we haven't seen them. Uh, are, are, are you snacking on a fruit bar? Yeah, I'm a little a little dessert Nutrigrain here. Don't mind me. Don't those dodge are, that question. No, I'm not dodging. Those are just those are delicious. I steal them from Riley all the time. Uh, no, yeah, they're the alien race uh, that we see once and we never see again, right? Yeah, listen, we've seen more Wookies in the in the universe. We've seen uh, more Yodas. Whatever the hell those things are now. We haven't gone we, back to Naboo. We've seen more Akbars. True. But right though, we have not gone back to Naboo. So uh, yeah, you're telling me that these these Gungans are are trapped on Naboo. They don't they don't travel uh, the galaxy.
All right, you're telling me that Darth Vader didn't go back to Naboo? And, where the f- Jar Jar? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, I, like this, yeah. this dude screwed everything up. Yeah. What? Where's this guy at? No, no, he doesn't do that because he's afraid of the guy. You know how it sounds on a motorboat. That's exactly what it is. And we've seen we've seen more Jabba's. Um, we've seen more Watto's. We've seen yeah. even a, another Sebulba. Yes, okay. there has been another Sebulba. You're right, hundred percent. So, Lucas Films, if you're hearing this, I Big fan. I want to see. A few more Gungans, okay? Listen, I saw that... Uh, what's that new series that they have? Apostle or, or something like that? Yeah, but I'm only going to watch the last episode because I guess it has Darth... Uh, Tra- no, what's his name? Uh, the Darth blah, 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 who... Darth Plagueis. Darth Plagueis is in it for like two the seconds. The Wise? Yeah, he's in it. Yeah, listen. Oh. I've, apparently I've heard from that show that they had a writer who had never seen any of the Star Wars uh, franchise. And so... You can get that, but you can't get some more Jar Jar action on here. I want to see some of that. 